The film's last crew review and non. A nominominous. Because me and Brody couldn't get to the cinemas in Melbourne to see all the movies that Angus wanted us to review, so we, we did Netflix. They didn't see a none of them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, team, Angus Dragon here. Welcome to the Film Slice Podcast. I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Kane Diggly Wiggly, Kane Dogs. Hi. And Bro Diddly Do, Bro My Star Man Richards. Otherwise known as Fatal Error. Fatal Error. <laughs> That's actually uh, kind of cool. <laughs> nice segue there, because uh, in the wake of Infinity Wars, there's not much out of the cinema, there's so we decided... Not a lot until it, Deadpool 2. We decided that instead of that, uh, we would go to the realms of Netflix and review one of their new editions uh, called Anon. Yes, I will start with a small precursor. I am very sick, and therefore if my enthusiasm seems low... Fully sick. It's your He's fault. He's fully sick. He's I'm just been... so sick. ...out partying, riding dirt bikes, and jet skis at the same just time. Just like doing backflips <laughs> things I never think of without thinking of Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> In a world without... And on an intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> Just go <cover> there. <laughs> <laughs> a crime detective meets a woman who threatens their security. <laughs> when did you see the movie and what did you think? When did you see the movie? What did you think? Do you like the movie? No the shit. <laughs> Start with Brody. Broadman, when did you see the movie? What do you think? Um uh, well first of all, fail error here. Um, so I saw <laughs> this Doc, film... please tell me he didn't watch it. Uh, last night. Uh, I done watch it last night, I did. Um... Nice time, what time did you done that? watch it? Oh, I reckon I watched it about 8pm last night. You done did, didn't you? About 8pm. <laughs> I, I really like, I liked the first half. I was expecting a nice, slow, uh, paced detective flick. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't a big fan of the second half. Yeah, fair, 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 fair. Kane Dogs, when did you see the movie and what did you think? So, mine is the opposite to Brody. I watched this film last night mm-hmm. with... What time? T- what time did you go down and watch it? Late. Like, like 10, 30, 11 p.m. late. I think he thinks that's late. Yeah. Look, some of us had to be somewhere this morning. Well, we all had to be here. I had to be here this morning. That was my excuse. Okay. Anyway, I watched this last night with my GF and her roommate because it looked like a fun thriller sci-fi detective romp. <laughs> no, nah, they both would have hated it. And about 30 minutes in, I felt very judged because we <laughs> wanted to have like a fun Saturday. We went out and bought snacks. Mm. And about 40 minutes into this, we They all, both left and we, Jordan no, was on the couch by himself. We all switched it off because mm. it was just really bringing down the vibes. <laughs> I know. And then woke up this morning and was like, I guess I should watch the second half to review it. <laughs> and the second half really picked up. And the second <laughs> half was fantastic. So yeah, right, right, right. I switched off about five minutes before all the cool shit happened, apparently. There you go. So I love the second half. Uh, I also watched it last night. Mm. Uh, yeah, what time? I, I, well, I watched it at uh, 10.30. I so, started watching it at 10.30. Oh, watched, watched it on. I actually really enjoyed it. It was, Broadman, I definitely agree with you, it was a bit of a slow burn and the second half did lose me a bit. But all in all, I would be would have been more than happy to see this at the cinemas. So, lads, you know that every week I put up on Twitter and now Instagram... Especially more, Instagram. Uh, more, yeah, more so Can Instagram I, nowadays. So, your mum hasn't seen the movie, but she assumes you liked it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, no, you know how I put up on Instagram each week uh, what movie we're going to watch and then ask the general public uh, if they've seen the movie and uh, get them to review it for us and we'll chuck it up on the podcast. And no one God, I hope back. this is going somewhere. And no one, no yeah, one replies. If, if this keeps going and then it's like, none this week. Uh, I actually got three. Ooh. Ooh, we got three. Okay, so the uh, first one is from Lisa Double J Double O Seven. Ooh, cool blue, name, blue, blue, really cool name. She's really sort of put herself out there by telling us. Uh, she says, "Love the cartoon, heart face, and a thumbs up." Oh, <laughs> that was it's making me excited for the second one. I guess. Uh, second one, I'm reading it too now. The Yay. second one is from uh, Flick Connection. They say, "If you like Netflix movies, check us out on YouTube." <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
So we've accidentally plugged someone else. So we've plugged someone else. Oh, uh, yeah, check out Flick Connection. But you know if what? they're a really bad channel, <laughs> we, we're not liable for it. Yeah, or no, if we're... they're great, look forward to some sort of <laughs> collab <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they commented on our thing, so... Uh, so we're going to comment on men of our word. Cheers we'll put it up exposure. on the podcast. I feel like we need uh, to go comment on theirs now and, and get them to give us a shout. And also, the, uh, lucky last, from Connor <laughs> Kelly, he said... Uh, to be honest, I've never even heard of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's fair. Neither had we, but... So there you go. That was uh, that was the general public's outlook on the film Anon. Uh, moving on to our next segment, would you recommend it and who would you recommend it to? And I understand that because it's on Netflix, I mean, it's, it is quite easy very... to recommend it to people because it a lot of people have Netflix. Yeah. Unless you don't have Netflix. So I'm going to add to that, would you have seen it at the movies? Yeah. I mean, um, are you, for this podcast, yeah. I was going to say. I don't know you, if I would just go out and see this random film. In a world where we are seeing at least one movie a week, the three of us, yeah, this would be one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're out there and you're doing a film review podcast, definitely watch it. Definitely, no, uh, I would, because I, it's a movie I that you can review. I would have seen this anyway, I reckon. Yeah. I would have... I, I love Clive Owen. Mm. He's not in a lot these days, but mm. when he is, he's great. I always get confused with Clive Owen because I, I my mind immediately goes to this advert that was about chicken or roast or something, and it's like a mock movie, and it stars Clive Oven and Rosemary <laughs> Sprigg, and it's from like 2001 or something. So every time I see Clive Owen, I'm like, ah. Oh, I thought it was Clive Oven. Oh, is that Clive Oven's brother or something? <laughs> I always get him mixed up with um, Gerard Butler. Because uh, yeah, Gerard yeah, Butler yeah. is moving into some more gritty films. I always get them sort of... And since I hadn't seen Clive Owen in a film since, like, Shoot 'em Up. They, yeah, they are like, very similar. <laughs> what I would really like is a buddy cop movie between Clive Owen and Owen Wilson. So it's Clive Owen Wilson. I would hate that. You know why? Because it'd, it'd be... There would be... No, we got to do it this way. Yeah, wow. But, but like... But why? Yeah, but I mean, okay. Can we, just, can we just go and like do like something else? Let's get a dog until it dies. No, we're gonna... I think... I'd hate... Why, why like, is Dr. Evil in it? Right. And then and then he's like, he's like, whoa, look at her. She's, uh, she's vaping. And he's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a little reference to the very popular <laughs> video on YouTube where there's a guy looking at a girl vaping and he goes, wow. <laughs> oh, You'll know you. it. Good on you. Or not. Okay. Or not. <laughs> uh, would I recommend it? Was the question at it. And um, sure. Yeah. Would you recommend it? And who'd you recommend it to? Okay. Right. I would recommend this to anybody that likes a thriller, mm-hmm. especially since it's on Netflix. Thrillers, good thrillers are sort of few and far between. Mm-hmm. I think Netflix originals are good, few and far between. Some of them are outstanding and some of them... This isn't a Netflix original. Isn't it? No. Oh, Not so funded by Netflix. So somewhere, really? somewhere it yeah. came out. Pretty wow. sure. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, somewhere like I, I completely minutes, but... thought it was a Netflix original. It got bought by Netflix and it was oh, okay. released on Netflix, but I'm pretty sure it was an independent <laughs> company that did it. Oh, okay, cool. Very I man. would recommend this to anyone who is colorblind. Because uh, not really missing out on it. Yeah. <laughs> very true. It is like, a very, there's like it's two very colors black. in the film. Even the blood in this looks black. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I would recommend this to anyone who's kind of like a science fiction fan. Yeah. Anyone who's kind of been interested in any of the recent Black Mirror stuff. It was just set up really well. I really love the world. <clears throat> um, and uh, for the most part, I really enjoyed this film. I really liked this, like the, the visual style. And, uh, and also, like, the user interface of everything, I thought, looked really, really interesting. Yeah. And uh, it was just, just, like, an interesting film for me. It's a very, uh, like, faint science fiction, though. Like, yeah. there's not flying cars, and there's not spaceships, and there's not it's... other worlds, but it is... It does have that element of yeah. science fiction. It's not like a space fantasy flick. No. Or, it, no. or anything like that, but it's, it's very much... Yeah, it's, like near future who would I recommend it to you ask thanks for asking uh, yes, I, I would <laughs> I would recommend, who would you it, recommend it to uh, anyone that has Netflix uh, you know I don't know I've watched a lot of pretty niche if I'm, I'm honest I've watched a lot of crap on Netflix and this is not the worst I what's think that's, next, what's I think that's it I think we're going to spoilers spoilers yeah Spoilers. Spoiler time. Oh, what a cool, 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 cool sound effect, Angus. <laughs> All right, guys, we're in the spoiler section. Uh, you've been warned. Broadman. We'll start with you. 
the very best thing you liked about the movie. Most very positive. best thing. I loved the user interface of all the stuff in the mind's eye. Mm-hmm. Them sending it to each other, them viewing anything, and the way they would just stare into nothingness. And the and, awkwardness <coughs> of it. Yeah. Yeah. And like viewing it from an outside perspective of how awkward every, everything is just because everyone's just in their own world now. Yeah, because the world is, it's so stunted. Yeah. They're like, there's there's a scene early on in the film where they're like, oh, can you send me the file? And it just sit like, the, the, the frame just sits of them sitting down, staring into the corner. And you're like, what what's happening here? And it takes, a, it takes a while before you jump into the eye and it's like, oh, this is happening, blah, 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 blah. And it, yeah, I really enjoyed that too. And it's really like, such a I good- I liked that it wasn't too over the top. Yeah. Like, I liked, I liked the mind's eye. It was like, oh yeah, it's, and it's also, they made it so it's just like one color to, mm. to not make it like, so it's like, it's like, it is the future, but it's still like this, it's still like, it's still gritty and noir. technologies and stuff. It's awesome. Um, and just them walking down the street and them having a very similar thing to a lot of cyberpunk films where like, because they've got this thing on their, like in their head, they can see advertising now. And just bouncing off of that where they go and they buy a hot dog. And it's such like an American thing or something to mm. buy a hot dog and to have that interaction with the hot dog lady. And they so don't there's talk. No talking. There's yeah. no talking. Yeah. They they do it all in silence and he buys it and like there's no and there's pays, not even interaction it, with and the payment. N- there's nothing yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Which was really good. A really good critique. Kane dogs. Your most positive thing about the film. Um, I absolutely love the moment where the main chick. What's her? Anon. Anon. Anon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No, I was yeah. trying to think of the actress. Well, uh, Amanda, Amanda Seyfried. Seyfried, Seyfried yeah. yeah. Anyway, Anon. Um, where Mama she Mia. decides to fuck with Clive Owen's world a bit. and But does she? Does that thing? Is she fucking with the... Who knows? But yeah. the point where, the point where, like, you know, <laughs> he sort of realises that she can do, like, or, or they can ruin everything. Like, they start replaying the moment of his son's death hmm. and then they delete all his happy memories um i just love that because in the trailer it shows that the stairs get extended it shows the bit where he gets hit by a train and i'm like oh that's kind of cool like she's sort of able to put like glitches mm, mess of, with as, his, yeah, reality. his reality and sort of that augmented reality his thing where she can place walls and shit um, but I didn't stop to think that not only she, she can do that but if she can mess with what he sees in his memory then she can really yeah, they can really, up. um, and I guess I I really like that moment because I, as I said, that was maybe five minutes into my second half of this viewing. Yeah, so it was really jarring to go from very little consequences, very little happening, and then like I woke up this morning and went to watch what I thought would be the rest of that, and five minutes in, he's watching his son die, and then all his memories get deleted, and yeah. then he like apartments on fire, then his apartments on fire, and then he sees rats Shoots everywhere, his neighbor, and it's so <laughs> yeah, that that whole sort of scene where. Everything sinks in that not a, he's a detective that can't trust what he sees to the point where he's practically a blind man. Mm. Is fantastic. What was your least favorite thing? Least favorite thing? I have I've I've I have two because like one of them's a really minor gripe, but it irritated me like to my core. Yeah, I really hated that he smoked in this film. Right, because the entire world is so pristine and clean, and it's like and it's like everything is kind of like this idealistic uh like view of like whoever created this technology it's like oh there'll be a world without crime and it's yeah. like so it's like like so like when he's walking down the street there is no rubbish on en- uh, like anywhere there is like it's just like p- like clean just like perfect like walls and floors yeah. and everything and there's like no street sounds everyone's at all. apartment looks like an open home yeah everyone's really quiet and they're just like walking down and i just felt like him smoking was just kind of a way for them to make it like, oh, this is kind of like a cyberpunk film. They're just like, they like, they just yeah, had that right. in there as like, as like, this is, this is like a, a, um, a homage to so many old noir mm. films and, and like films like Blade Runner and stuff like that, where they just smoke in the future because yeah. it's kind of that eighties view of the future. But I did, this didn't feel like that eighties view of the future to me. Well, it did. This, this felt like just a, a view of like kind of like a slight alternate future if this technology like was a future made yeah. by someone that has never seen any Terminator film well <laughs> Kane Dogs you touched on it before um and said that this movie is very noir and the smoking reminded me of like yeah. 
noir movies and stuff, and it was very reminiscent of that. But I do see where you're coming from. Like, where, even, like the the way they could have sold it to me is if the entire cigarette was just like pitch black, so it would look like a future cigarette. Yeah, like you know? a, like an e cigarette. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. just like and just anything to make it not look like a cigarette would yep. have just would have just made it completely or acceptable. Even to if me. there was some sort of ventilation, like a cigarette with a ventilation system, so there wasn't just like smoke and stuff like that. Like mm. you, he's like you hear him like take a puff of it but no smoke comes out or anything like that. That, and um, I felt like they didn't know how to end this film. I felt like yeah. they, they set up all of this really interesting idea and like, they just like, it's just like such a, like a, a nice slow burn of finding this like really interesting detective story, which I did find really interesting, mm. but I didn't really know where, where to go with it. And like, there's a, there's like an obligatory, uh, obligatory twist in this, which I felt like it was in there because every film in the detective journal like needs this, a twist. Has a, yeah, yeah. I, like I didn't feel like it wasn't a it wasn't a huge surprise for me. And I just felt like there were so many moments like that towards the end of the film where they just didn't know how to wrap up things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kane Douglas, your the worst thing about this film. One is she sort of decides to tell Clive Owen's character that she's not the killer towards the end. And I feel like she should have just like Within the first... The minute she finds out he's a detective, she should have just been like, oh, hey, I'm not the one you're looking for. Like, even if she just was like, maybe it's not me. Did you ever think of that? Like, would have made more sense to me than to wait to the last minute to be like, by the way, I'm not the one with the gun that's killing everybody. It's someone else. Mm. Um, The other thing I didn't like, and it's more so because I think I would have found it more interesting, is whenever movies take technology this far and bring it to a world... And I know that in real life, people wouldn't accept that kind of change. I'm always really interested to see the tra- like the transition. So when they decided to be like, everybody's going to have a phone, like everybody's going to have the system in their head. We will record everything you do at all times. You will like, you will always be seen. You will never be able to hide anything you do. Immediately when you think of that in the real world, every, like everyone would be against it. Like everybody lost their shit when they found out that maybe Facebook is... Selling their, information. selling their information to advertisement. I don't yeah. know why anyone was surprised, but good on them. I'm, I'm aware that with this kind of stuff in films, there would be a huge argument and there would be a whole lot of people that wanting to fight this kind of transition. And I I would have been much more interested to see some of that. Like even see if, the rebellion? Even if thing? at the start there was like, not, not necessarily a voiceover, but just something to be like, look, they decided that humanity would only be safe if... Everybody had this kind of stuff, well, and some yeah, people they fought- offered a world without crime. Yeah, and like, it's that, like-, like that, that is such an enticing thing. It's like without crime, it's not like with less crime. Without, without the crime. thing is, is anybody who thinks about that for more than a second is aware that it's unachievable because everybody's ideals of what should be crimes and what shouldn't be crimes is different. Yeah. So, I just I would have preferred to see even at the start, or even if it was mentioned halfway through, talk of people that resisted this sort of transition because. It's just, it's not realistic to me to just accept that everybody was okay with it. Mm. And for one person to decide to go against it and for everyone to be surprised. Angus, what was your biggest gripe or dislike? So, um, this movie had me. Like, I really enjoyed this movie. I love the slow burn of it and Mm. the cinematicness of it. Like, the (laughs) noirness and everything. It was really great. And and it had. And it had like the the social discord in it and everything, and um, it it really had me up until the very last scene, and it absolutely destroyed it for me. Where um, that they attempt to make it profound, and I was ready for like a profound moment, yeah. um, and it's just the the last line that Amanda Seyfried's character says. Yeah. Um, and like, cause he says something like he says, the conversation, the conversation is like, what do you have to hide? What? Yeah. What do you have to He's hide? Like, and everything. I don't have anything to hide. I just have nothing I want you to see. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and I just, I, it wasn't profound enough. It for didn't me. hit. Yeah. It, was, yeah, it was a disappointing end. It was meant to like, it was obviously meant to be profound and everything. They take but that pause and the music comes e- in. Exactly. That it was all mm. there except except the line. Oh, the, the sound design in this film. Like the line, the yeah, the line of the last line that she says just really really bugged me because I, I I can't remember it. But at the time, I was like, why she say like I think I was expecting her to say something different. So Sorry. the other thing that I didn't really like that I wish that they 
touched on a bit more was the fact that Clive Owen's character kept on looking back at memories and stuff and he didn't he didn't live in the present mm. and I really wanted Amanda Seyfried's character to say to to be the one like oh I don't have any memories because I like to live in the present and you know the world you, you know you, you can't get stuck in your memories kind of thing yeah. and I really wanted her character to, and I think that's kind of what I wanted her character to end on in that end scene that I was talking about that that didn't that he's so caught up in the past and a lot of his character development is about uh, you know uh, something that happened in the past about his kid dying and that guilt and everything and his character development is all about coming to terms with that and like letting go of that but it didn't really yeah it just didn't just didn't hit home as hard as I wanted it to to hit there's something in this movie that I really just wanted to see I wanted to see more of this world um, in terms of the consequences of having this kind of technology and they touch on one which don't get me wrong huge consequence if this can be hacked the whole system falls apart I feel like they shouldn't be surprised that there should be someone that can hack it mm. but um, what I would have liked to see which, which you just touched on is people that get stuck in looking at memories would have liked them to go to some sort of asylum or anything like that like maybe maybe he gets a lead and it takes him to an asylum and there's people in there and they're not so much crazy. They're just stuck looking at things in their mind and they, yeah. they're unable like to live in the world Addicted to now. their past yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Like maybe they lived a great part. Like it would have been great to go like maybe you get some sort of lead that takes them to like a movie star or like a has-been movie star and they yeah. go and the movie yeah. star just replays the glory days in his mm. head and that's why he's sort of technically like terminally ill or something like that. I would have liked just a few more, a few more winks to the consequences of this world. Um, because there are and also like so also many the pros. Yeah, there's like there's like yeah. there's that one big pro where you like you can there's like there's like there's two big that I think they kind of almost outweigh a lot of the negatives in the situation where it's like there's like there's no crime and also Clive Owen gets to see all of his memories of his uh, passed mm. away son and it's yeah. like even though that's keeping him in, in the past there's kind of there's like there's a part of me which is like man. It's like I understand why he's stuck in the past. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's, it's like, like yeah, definitely. if you had that resource, you would like. There's no way you would give that up. Yeah, like that is like that is such a that is such an amazing thing. And I, I'm ha- like hat off, uh, hats off to the um to the writers for mm. that. It's like that was it's, that was such a good idea. It's literally offering an everyday person a photographic memory. Yeah, like if you had the chance to have a photographic memory, would you would you take I it? Think yes. Like, yeah, like like, like be, yeah. yeah. The the point of this discussion that we're having right now is sort of what I wanted to see, and that there are so many pros and negatives. For instance, another negative: um, imagine being a teacher talking to kids, not knowing whether they're looking at you or they're just playing back their favorite TV show in their head. Like yeah. at no point in time do you have any idea whether anybody is looking at you. Mm. And well, they, they do. Touch, I mean, they, you, they do touch, they touch on, on that, on that during like, the scene. sex scene. Yeah. Um, and again, it's sort of. Because they do that with a with with sort of um, a female character that we don't know and never see again, yeah. Consequences of it aren't really touched upon. Yeah, fair enough. And I think the consequences of people of you never being able to know whether someone's looking at the world that's happening at the moment or whether they're looking at something completely different. Like I feel like if someone were to design this technology, at the very least, they design something that tells other people what they're. Fair enough. Whether whether they're looking at the real world or maybe like there's just a red dot that shows up in their eye if they're looking at something in the mm. in, in in like the technological state but I'd, I'd be interested in seeing a film very similar to this but it's only the detectives who have this technology like that's yeah. what it's I only thought, law enforcement that's what i thought it was at the beginning of the film that only he could go back because the other thing is is if everybody can look at everybody else's thing or or, or why would you need to or, see a detective nah, only is... he has the uh, access, <laughs> access to yeah. the what are they called the ether yeah the ether. i still feel everyone like else so everyone just... has just has their just own, has their but own. Mm. him being a detective, he gets to kind of see. Yeah, he, see he, other he can people's. jump between different people's point of views. And then when he gets um, fought, like other people he has can share hand memories badge, with each other. Yeah. Can't. The but, other uh, thing is, yeah. is the concept of being a detective. I would have liked to touch on the more um, what's the word I'm looking for? Seductive side of things that you can see anybody else's point of view as a detective. Mm. He can yeah. he can see anyone's point of view as if you wouldn't spend a whole bunch of time. 
like I'll say it, like l- looking at a porn star, like mm. anybody else's point It'd of view. Be... There should be a seductive side that's stated in this yeah. that they don't touch upon. I think I think that was that was amongst my big gripes where they just didn't know how to end this. Yeah. Like they had a really good idea, and I think it was all like set up really well. Mm. But mm. then there was just so many moments at the end of the film where I don't think that they kind of knew how to wrap up this story. Up. Like um, for the entire film, all right, the entire film I was watching this, I was like, I can't wait until the moment where there's that big show of color in this film. Yeah. yeah. And I was really expecting it to be in her apartment to kind of show that like living free is kind of a or better choice. at least in her memories. Yes, like, like if something... he finds a way to track her life and her life is super colorful and all of that sort of stuff and it's just because she's not mm. living life through a screen. Yes, like something great. like that. I was I was expecting it for the entire film because it's such a gray mm. and dark... Uh, visual yeah. theme for the entire film I was just waiting for that moment and I was also expecting like thinking that it could have been like uh, actually like a bad thing if there was like a room filled with really really vibrant blood and it was really yeah. shocking for him and it would have been really shocking for the audience as well because it was just yeah, all like greys and then a then huge like red, red. And uh, I was really just waiting for some moment like that to the film yeah. it's and, and sorry, small things on. like you were talking about with like done with the technology. I was waiting for him to uh, abuse the technology yeah. a lot. And then uh, also waiting for him to have a profound moment where he doesn't want to use it anymore. And he like flicks it off or whatever. I was, I was totally expecting him and the, and Anon to kind of run away together, run away together. for him to become a new fatal error. Or even mm. if we got a clip of, cause, cause sticking with noir theme, there's usually a dirty cop. For his partner mm. to be a dirty cop, and so his partner continuously uses like misuses technology or something. I was waiting the for or the partner to be the the bad villain. guy. Yeah, yeah me too. Because um, it turned out it it was someone in the police force. It was, no, like it was just a hacker just who a hacked hot, his way yeah. into, the, into the. It was the guy the that they force. hired to hack. Yeah, but he wasn't yeah. he wasn't an FBI hacker. He was just a hacker, and they hired mm. him. Yeah, he had um, his own credentials. Yeah. yeah. Um, I What's... thought that I, that was such that was a really big disappointment for me in the film. Yeah, it was, just, it was such guy. a throwaway moment. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I like as soon as I saw that first mur- murder, I was like, okay, well it's not her. Mm. And, what I and, really and then just waiting. Oh, then they just setting up like this kind of like distrust between him and his partner in the police force. I was like, yeah. oh, it's totally him. He doesn't believe anything he's saying. It's totally yeah. him. And, what I really would yeah. have liked is for the guy who does the. Um, like the tracking in the other room while she's in the yeah, apartment. For him to I really would have liked him to be the hacker. Even and if he, he faked hacked, his own death. Yeah, he like... hacked Clive Owen's character's eyes to see him dead. And like, okay. then he disappeared that and everything. Been, like, that was cool. That would have yeah. been a really good idea, yeah, I think. But... I, I thought the, the reasons for that character, they just weren't thought through. They were just like, yeah. we need a twist. This is the twist. Uh, Kane Dogs, did you have any ideas on what we could end this on? I did, but I forgot. All right, bro man. <laughs> um, first of all, fatal error. Um, fatal error. Second of all, <gasps> uh, you're seeing what I'm seeing. You're no, seeing what I'm, I'm seeing. seeing what you're seeing. seeing, what seeing, what seeing. I'm running through the grass. I'm running through the grass. I'm running away. I'm running away. Am I running through the grass, I'm running, I'm running through the grass or is he oh, running? Oh, no, he's going to fall over. Oh, I can see myself. I've got a gun. I've got a gun. Does he have a gun? He's got a gun. He's going to point at me. Is that me? But I'm me. Who's me in this situation? Running through the grass. Running through the grass. Oh, running again. Oh, my God. Way to commit to that real piece of shit. Good job. You're welcome. I'm happy with that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Film Slice podcast. If you liked this, you can find us on iTunes and Twitter and SoundCloud. And not Facebook at the moment, but maybe one day soon. And YouTube. And YouTube. Uh, Instagram. Did you say that? Yep. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye.